r slash history, where we're going to uncover some historical facts, which we didn't know before. It was me, I mean, mainly me. I guess you don't know more than I do. <laughs> but let's see. Interesting fact number one. First World War soldiers tended allotments. What's allotments? And the British army held vegetable shows in 1917-1918. Mr. has found that the British army held a vegetable show in the base camps in Le, Le Havre during August 1917-1918, in which the Belgian servicemen and French civilians also took part. Not only this encouraged the cultivation of land around the camp, which helped boost food supplies, these allotments offered men the opportunity to relax, nurture a sense of agency and purpose, and develop unit pride. <laughs> It's, it's kind of funny and sad at the same time that they really had to revert to making a vegetable show so people could think again of normal life. That's, it's, it's insane. I always love stories like these. John Froome, the bizarre island religion that worshipped an American GI. As part of the US campaign against Japan, American troops landed on hundreds of islands in the South Pacific. This is part of the tactic of island hopping in which American troops would focus on occupying small, lightly guarded but strategically important islands throughout the Pacific. I was going to say specific. These islands would ultimately provide a path for the US military to invade Japan while bypassing many of the latter fortified island propositions. Avoiding these major islands meant that the US came into contact with many island nations that had little to no contact with the outside world ever before. As the US set up base on these islands, previously uncacted tribes um, witnessed for the first time things like airplanes, manufactured goods, modern medicine, guns, and canned food. Soon cults worshipping the goods and machines brought by American soldiers appeared in islands across the Pacific, including some islands of Vanuata, Fiji, and New Guinea. One such place was Tana, a small island located in what is now Vanuata. The island had been in contact with four nations previously, with their, uh, with their islands being colonized by the British, but they had not been exposed to mass-produced goods of the modern age. When thousands of American GIs moved onto the island during World War II, the people of Tana were shocked by them and the goods they brought with them. In response to the miraculous supplies held by their foreigners, the people of Tana blended their previous beliefs, including a volcano god called Kera Peramun and an anti colonist cult. <laughs> Interesting, anti colonist cult. With these new exper experiences and created what's known as John Froome Cargo Cult. The members of the John Froome Cargo Cult worship the god called John Froome, usually depicted by members of the cult as an American GI in uniform. Some believe that the name John Froome is a corruption of the larger phrase John from America, another cult on the same island worshipping a gold called Tom Navy. <laughs> the members of the John Froome Cargo Cult did not see the foreign troops as a new god, but rather as an extension of their, or of their own ancestors or deities. When World War II came close to an end and American soldiers went back home, the members of the cargo cult continued to worship these modern gods. Many of them even believed that these gods would return and bring with them greater bounty of cargo. The members of the John Froome cargo cult saw their god as one who brought the goods to the island and as a messiahic figure who would one day return and bring these goods back with them. The John Froome cargo cult the John from Cargo Cult built symbolic runways across the island, complete with wooden air controlled towers to attract their god back to them. They also built life size replicas of airplanes and out of wood and straw. In 1957, the John Froom movement developed the Tana Army, a non violent organization that engaged in military parades to emulate the mannerism of the American soldiers that once been on the island. The members of this squad wear red, white, and blue and participate in the parade on the February 15th every year. So most of these cargo cults have died off as more and more people are exposed to the modern outside world. The drum from cargo cult still survives. The origin of their god has become less important and adherents are now mainly attracted to the movement because the community that it was that it has helped build over the past 70 years. <laughs> this is just is amazing. A John Froome cargo cult. <laughs> Imagine what's your religion? John Froome. <laughs> This is a really interesting question I've always asked myself. What was the actual life expectancy in the middle medieval of Europe? I've been trying to find this out for a few days now, but I keep finding contradictory sources. Is a Britain common conception that people before modern times died very young, with many people dying in their 30s. But some people say that life expectancy back then wasn't that much shorter than today, with people who survived until adulthood, having high chance of living until their 60s, with, while the 30 year figure is a myth caused by high infant rate mortality. So those might be. Our people say no, and life expectation of average person was that short, usually between 30 and 40. And the infant mortality screen the life expectancy is a myth itself. Oof. 
That's a complicated question. I was wondering, like, did people in the Middle Ages actually just get like 30, 40, 50? Did actual people get, you know, grow to 80 regularly? I wonder if this is fully documented, but uh, if you live past 15, you had pretty much the same chance of reaching 60 as today. Mortality over 60 rises steeply again, so much lower chance of reaching 80 or 100 than today. Oh, but it wasn't uncommon to reach 70, and that was the case even earlier. The 15, 0 to 15 ages where people had a vastly higher chance of death than nowadays. Half of children die before their first birthday. With infections, diseases, etc. having a far higher mortality rate for them. Let's put it this way. An incredibly unlikely and convenient family has 10 children. 5 died aged 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. The rest die 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. Average life expectancy for a family was 32.5 years old. That's why life expectancy in the medieval period was in the 30s. I see. So if you got past, past 60, you were, and if you then didn't get stuck in a war somewhere, you were ought to make it out quite long. Interesting. So I guess if we ignore child mortality, um, then people used to even live until their 60s. And to round this video off, we still look at some historical memes. Four was founded by a racist. Yeah, well, so was Nissan. <laughs> Far away, just being like, <coughs> um, we, we won't talk about this. If you don't know who founded Fauve, uh, go look it up. You'll find it to be a very, very interesting fact. Imagine not having cowboy period. This point was, post was made by USA gang. <laughs> European cowboys. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird. That, that, how does that even work? Belgium, invent fries. Give it to the Americans to get it more known. Your soldiers speak French. Your soldiers speak French and now Americans think they're eating French fries. <laughs> oh, America, you're idiots. <laughs> 8th century Baghdad, 8th century London, 20th century Baghdad, 20th century London, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Switcheroo! Isn't it incredible that the Romans were able to conquer the whole Mediterranean? They just had superior strategies and leadership. <laughs> what strategy are you going to use to defeat Hannibal Varro? Strategy, I have 77,000 Roman soldiers at the favor of Jupiter by my side, I don't need a strategy. <laughs> Logic. Country elect socialist presidents. Yay! Want me to kill them? <laughs> Operation Banana Republic is a go. <laughs> uh, too true. Mr. Hotler listening to a 15 year old Hoi 4 player explaining how he could have won <laughs> World War II. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Imagine having medieval period. This meme was made by European gang. <laughs> oh, I see. They're just reacting now to each other. You descended from the sun god Amaterasu. Your country gets bombed with the power of a thousand suns. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Greeks versus Romans. Greeks. We practice democracy. Romans. Best that we can do is war. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Spanish traders, tomatoes, Italians. <laughs> well done, Spanish traders. Yeah, red and yellow. Yeah, makes orange. Blue and red, yeah, I can see that. In 1962, proposals were made to bomb cities in Florida, blame it on Castro and invade Cuba. Ooh, that could have gone gastronomically wrong. <sighs> Civil war surge, giving a shot of whiskey to the soldier before amputating his leg. I am healthcare. <laughs> what made you choose Islam, uh, Christianity, or what made you choose Christianity or Islam? Russians. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> if Islam allowed alcohol, most Russians would be Muslim today. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> Seeing nice straight line borders on a map as a kid. Later learning why these borders are straight. Yeah. Yeah. Mostly Europeans. Mostly Europeans. <laughs> World War I military transportation. <laughs> horses. <laughs> oh no, these poor horses. <laughs> uh, I think that's a good I'll go out to end it on. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice one, leave me suggestions for our reddits and bye bye. Special shout out to the Patreon boys Crimson, Dan Duitman, Hans with the Flammenwerfer, Lonely, Rock Broomen, Wolfie, Demon to Free One, Demon to Free Four, 100, Alex Savage, Austrian HD, Donna, Gopnik, Robotnik, Happy Cow, James Meredith, Jonas Becker, The Renegade Samurai, Ronilok, Selena Binko, and Timor for being amazing Patreons. Thank you so much.